Ah, uh, slash day, do buckaroos. How the heck are you? I'm gonna be Tom. Well, I was gonna say whiskey whisper, but I'm not uh, exactly drinking whiskey, man. I'm uh, trying to change things up. So, uh, this is holiday cocktails part five, but I, I do preach work with what you have. Uh, there's a lot of things we all like to make, but I, you know, being a person on a budget, you can't always go to the store and buy a whole bunch of ingredients. Sometimes you just gotta make the best. With what you have so that's kind of what i've been trying to do here i do need to get to the store to get a just a few ingredients to expand but once i get that there then i can do a bunch more however i'm working through the stuff i have on hand here's what i got so i'm using the stoli vanilla flavored premium vodka it's at 75 proof And my wife, who does a drink, who's starting to become an expert on vanilla vodka, <laughs> says she likes this one the best so far. So this is what we're going with. So anyway, <laughs> so I've got the Stoli vanilla. So and I'm using cranberry black cherry juice. So I've got two ounces of the Stoli vanilla. I've got uh, uh, two uh, uh, two ounces of the cranberry black cherry juice. I've got a couple dashes of cranberry bitters, and this is what I've got here. Uh, we went through, oh shoot, I forgot to bring that thing. Would you have me my tablet here? So I was trying to come up a name for this particular cocktail, and a friend had introduced me to ChatGPT because, you know, I'm kind of a technological philistine. <laughs> So I was trying to come up with a name for it, so I decided to plug in what I had in, as far as ingredients go and see what it came up with. So what it, what it gave me was, the first answer was a Crimson Slay. Didn't hate it, didn't love it. So I asked for additional names, and here's what it gave me. It gave me Hollyberry Bliss, Cherry Noel, Vanilla Cranberry Cheer, which I kind of like. A frosted cranberry, which I think is my favorite. Yuletide glow, merry cherry mixer, which ain't bad either, since I've got the cherry. So here's the thing: I, I was gonna go without a garnish, but my OCD wouldn't let me. So I decided to use a dark cherry garnish. And the reason I feel like I'm getting away with that is because <coughs> I'm using cranberry black cherry juice. So there's 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 some cherry in there. So I had to have a garnish, which is why I'm going with that. But anyway. Mary Cherry Mixer, Santa's Velvet Slay, I can't make that would make sense to me. Jingle Juice, I kind of like, but I want to reserve that name for something else. <laughs> uh, Winterberry Whisperer, I kind of like that, especially since I'm the Whiskey Whisperer. And Candy King Crimson, I didn't like it all because, well, there's no peppermint in there. So I'm leaning towards Frosted Cranberry, but as I'm looking through this list again, I kind of like Winterberry Whisper, uh, but <laughs> we're, it's all tentative at this point. So anyway, let's just see how the drink tastes, shall we? Here's the thing. Cranberry and vodka isn't anything new under the sun, right? Everybody's done this. So I'm using cranberry black cherry juice. Just a slight variation, but it does change the game a little bit. The vanilla vodka is nice. I am a whiskey guy, but the vanilla vodka does work in this capacity. And I have cranberry bitter, so which is why I use them to really up the aromatics and to enhance the cranberry note. Now, my wife said you should do the, the frosted whatever. Sugar cranberries. Use the frosted cranberry, then she could make a frost that she could make a sugar cranberry to go in the drink, which would be great. But since again, I'm winging it here and I don't have that particular garnish, which is why I use the cherry. But yes, with that particular garnish, that name would be perfect. Of the vanilla vodkas that I have had as well, I, the Stoli probably is better than most of, of the commercial names. Um, 
that we all know. And it does blend well with this cranberry black cherry juice, which is my, my favorite juice. I really like it. It's not quite as sweet as the, you know, the cranberry juice cocktail. And not near as tart as, you know, cranberry juice. <laughs> so it gives you that little bit of sweetness, which is why I added the cherry garnish, because I was using the black cherry juice. So we'll play around with that name and see what works. And I'll keep working between now and, <laughs> and the end of the holidays. Between now and January 2nd, <laughs> various holiday cocktails. I'm going to try to stay in my lane for the most part. Um, meaning most of my cocktails are going to be whiskey based because that's kind of what I like to drink. That and uh, the themes are going to be mostly around Christmas because that's what I celebrate. But if I had an idea for, for you know, Kwanzaa, Festivus, or Hanukkah, see, but, you know, I don't want to step anybody's toes either, so I'm a little trying to be careful about that as well. As some of my, my, my friends that celebrate those holidays want to get in touch with me about their ideas, and I would like to, like to, like to, like to do a, a collaboration, if you will. Regardless, this is really nice, though. It's a nice, easy-drinking cocktail. I can see this as an aperitif, uh, a before-dinner cocktail, which typically what, what vodka is used for, or any version of a martini, which, in reality, this is what this is. A riff on a martini. It's why I like the coupe, this glass here, this style of glass, because it is very versatile. It works for a martini instead of that crazy-ass martini glass that nobody likes. Nobody likes that white brim glass. You're going to spill shit all over. <laughs> Nobody's a fan. Uh, but this particular glass works with a martini. It works with a, uh, a Manhattan. It works with a French 75. Uh, there are many cocktails, many, many places will streamline their glasses and use the coupe and get rid of all those others. The French 75, yes, it is traditional with the champagne fluid. However, if you've been out and about, many places will use the coupe instead because, again, it lets them streamline your glassware. As well as, as a martini, a lot of finer restaurants and bars will use a coupe for just about everything. Because it's a nice, elegant glass and it just works. It's perfect for a Manhattan. But it works for just about any, you know, uppity cocktail. <laughs> any pretentious cocktail, the coupe works. Anyways, yeah, I, I, the, the truth is I prefer using a coupe to uh, a, a, your traditional martini glass when making a martini. Because it, it just, I, I, I like the presentation better for one. And it's just easier to manage. But the reason a lot of a lot of finer restaurants and bars will use them, because again, it allows them to streamline their glassware and not have, you know, a half dozen here, half dozen there. You can just buy a lot of coupes, and that covers just every nice cocktail. Anyways, anyways, I digress. And there are different versions of a coupe, you know. My wife re recently found me uh, hollow stem versions, which I had never seen before. And I had a friend uh, who had heard of them, but he'd never seen one personally either. And, and he's rather an expert in glassware. But this one I like to use a lot because it's just nice, it's easy, it's elegant. Uh, anyways, anyways, I digress. I'm not going to go through my usual spiel. We're just going to skip to the end and say... All around good guys, Slauncher. Thanks for tuning in.